do do be do be do be do do be do do. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome to the shed. You'll have to excuse me if I uh, seem a little out of sorts today because I, I just had a minor op on, on my on my ears, you see, this morning. Yes, yes. In in oh, no, related news. Oh, you motherfucking in pieces of shit. Fucking fucking one more. Ah! <sighs> That's better. Right. So apparently this can't work with this. Let's fix that, shall we? Okay, so. Mm. Beer is good. So. First order of business, I've got to Frankenstein these things. There's one on, there's, uh, there's on, on the Z-cam here, you can see, I've got a 24mm EFS uh, 2.8 all the way through lens. Well, of course it's 2.8 all the way through. It's a prime. We've got another EFS prime known as a Nifty 50. Uh, this is the 50mm 1.8 stepper motor version with the metal back. Um, and these have been my workhorse YouTuber lenses for, like, I don't know, 11 years, something like that. Maybe maybe not quite that long, but um, I think, yeah, so first few years I was making content, I was start, I, I used the kit lens here, which is an 18 to 55 uh, 3.5 with stabiliser. Now, if this was actually a bit wider, a 2.8. I probably still use this. It's not the sharpest in the world, but it, you know, it does the job. Now, the thing with cinema cameras, um, and in particular, in this case, we're looking at the Z Cam here. This is the Z Cam E2M4. They don't really work. They work with EF glass. I've got an EF adapter here. Look, it comes as micro four thirds, but it's an interchangeable mount. You just take some bolts out, and away you go. But we tried on set using EFS glass, and I'll tell you why, on the gimbal. And the gimbal I've got at the moment, because I sold all my stuff when I was absolutely batshit mental and, and suicidal and things. Um, so the one I've got left is the Xeon Crane uh, V1. Oh, that's where I put my batteries. I thought I, I never put them somewhere. <laughs> uh, when you when you're a cinematographer, you tend to get these Sony MPF batteries just just lying about everywhere. Um, oh yeah, so the the tripod goes in here, but the the C cam's on the tripod at the moment. Now this thing is a beast. It can hold a ridiculous amount of weight. Now the newer gimbals by Xeon and and DJI and things also can hold a ridiculous amount of weight, but that was the first one to do it. The problem we've got is cinema glass is very, very heavy. Um, so we're on set on, um, on unit 19. So on unit 19, um, we've done a lot of stuff locked off on tripods and stuff like that. But we want it, I'm a gimbal operator, so obviously I want some gimbal shots in there. I've had Nick as, as our DP come up with some gimbal shots to do. But the problem is, this Z-cam, well, she's beautiful, but she's got a fat ass! Um, this thing, if you've not seen a cinema, this is quite a small cinema camera, really. That's why I bought it, actually. It's a solid metal, unlike the Black Magic one, which is like plastic construction to, you know, serve on costs and things, it keeps the cost down for them. This is slightly more expensive, but it's, um, it's all metal. It's like it's built like a tank. It's brilliant. Really, really heavy. What else is heavy? Heavy cinema glass. So if I take this off, we take this, strip it back, and we take this handle off. I've got to leave this on because that's how we uh, record. Um, we've got a cage here. You put the cinema glass on the front. It's really front heavy, so um, as you're looking at it, that way. So you put the cinema glass on the front and it does that. 
which means you've got to put, to balance it, you've got to put the body further back and then it balances and then away you go. The problem with that is these first gen gimbals, the way they work is your camera goes there and then there's a motor on the back there. So you can't actually physically get, if we do a side view here, you can't actually physically get this back far enough because it interferes with the back motor. Um, mod modern, more modern gimbals now, like the back motor's like, like that, like underneath the plate, so you can put the camera a bit further back and you've got more room to balance it. Can't do that with this gimbal, and we haven't got the budget to buy a bigger a cinema gimbal with which has a much bigger plate and um, these arms here can be extended so the plate's a lot further away from the back motor and you've got a lot more space to balance like a big chunky load like this one so the only option is to physically put this more forwards so that the back motor can clear the back of the camera here you know when it's tilting around and stuff how do we do that? But if we put it forwards, obviously it's going to do that. So we need light glass on the front, you see, something has to give, which is where these come in. These are EFS glass uh, lenses. They are 100% apart from the, apart from the, you know, the mountain point at the back there. They are 100% plastic body, really light, tack sharp to say they're relatively cheap lenses. Um, this 24 is 150 I think now nowadays uh, and this is like 50 50 is like 100 quid and it's one of the best lenses Canon's ever made you ask any person who uses the Canon system they'll tell you about the nifty 50 but also on the um, on the set there's lots of small tight corridors I can't say exactly why for NBA reasons but yeah so we need something that's quite wide that 50 is probably is like the equivalent of like a a 70 to 80 mil lens which obviously is gonna yeah it's gonna get some nice bokery backgrounds but you're gonna have to be like you know 200 meters away from the talent to to get otherwise you're just gonna get their eyeball so we're gonna go with the 24 now this is on it goes on because it's a kind of mount but the camera doesn't recognize it you can't change the aperture uh, remotely because it's EFS and these are built for EF which is the more expensive lenses in the Canon line. It's also focused by wire um, you know that's how they get the cost down which means you can't focus um, it just doesn't because it doesn't recognize it that it, 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 you can't focus but I'm gonna Frankenstein this bitch and uh, basically make it so yeah I might not be able to change the aperture but if I set the aperture at the widest it's gonna be 2.8 anyway because it's a dark set so it needs to be the widest anyway. I think it's already 2.8, isn't it? Yeah. So make sure that the aperture is wide open. I'm also going to do something about getting the camera to at least let you focus because you turn the dial now, literally nothing happens. So it's time to get out the soldering iron <laughs> and uh, basically Frankenstein this biatch and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes and then we'll try and balance it so uh, let's go many unbearable hours later oh yes so we've got it working in theory we've got it working um we've stripped it down a bit i might even have to take these screws off depending on the balance i'm using these as counterbalances now well, not count bounce at the moment because I've got a big ass battery in the back. I'd like to fly it with this bigger battery. There's three sizes of MPF. There's these. There's the medium sized ones, which are still on set. And then there's these little thin ones, which as you can see, I tried to run this. If you're using Z, if you're using raw or log, these last about five minutes a piece. And I've only got six of them. So uh, I want to try and balance it with this. So, hmm. I think if we uh, clear everything off, we've got some screws here, and we'll bring in our gimbal. Wah! Now, hopefully, we can get this in focus for you. There we go. Yeah. I'm using quite a small screen. All, all my good stuff's on uh, again on set, so uh, yeah. Okay. That's our tightening knobs. Uh, knob. 
And what I've also done is got a floppy USB-C cable, because this is the one that I've been using, which is nice and short, but again, it sticks out that way and interferes with this back motor. It gets kind of caught on it. So I'm gonna have this flopping down and I've turned the um, hard drive round so it'll come in from the bottom. So I'm gonna try and put it on with this cage and see what kind of balance we've got. So I think we need to take these off. Now it probably goes without saying, but um, I'll be flying this using a phone as a monitor. So there's that. Um, so, okay, let's, uh, let's get this on. And I'm gonna try and put it as far across this way as possible. Um, and then we'll see how it balances. So I'll be right back. Many, many, many unbearable hours later. It's alive! Uh, there we go. A balanced <laughs> Z-cam. And it's very, very heavy. Oh. I'm gonna, this is just on the post, obviously. No, we build this out of a big ring around it and I'll be wearing a vest with an arm that holds it. But yeah, we, we got it balanced. This is with the power plug. If we put it up here as with the power plug a floppy USB-C cable um, a battery not not to power it because it's gonna be powered from the power but um, I'm gonna have a extension cable in a, in a backpack basically that's just a counterweight <laughs> yeah. that's acting as a counterweight and yeah no vibrations no nothing so is it possible to balance a Z-cam on a first gen gimbal? Yeah, but you might have to use some cheaper plastic glass and cannibalize it so it works on your camera. Nice, that calls for another pint. And of course the next job is to restring my guitars because uh, I've not played for a while and I thought, you know, my mental health being medium, I would have to start, start playing again. I may post on YouTube, I may not, I don't know. But until next time, I've been Moobit, you've been Awesome Source, and I'll see you at the next vlog. ta -ra. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your f***ing hands! I like to move it, move it, move it.